What's going on? Uh, my name's Isaac Colavecchio. This is our school bus. It's a 1992 Thomas 40 foot. It's a pusher and it's got a, I think it's a 5.8 Cummins diesel engine in it, um, an Allison transmission. Um, and we converted this over about six months. We take it down to California about once a year to hang out with my in-laws on their ranch. And then the rest of the time it's on Airbnb. So you can actually come and stay in our bus in our yard. Our house is right there. Um, but it's a, it's a cozy little spot. These couches are covering the front wheel wells and they're six feet long. I made them just long enough for me to take a nap on. You got some nice thick foam from Amazon and then just uh, my mom helped us sew these uh, covers. So we'll uh, show you real quick how this converts to a dining room and then to a bedroom. It's easier with two people, but I think I can manage it. So in here, Got your table. When it's up, you can't leave the bus or come into the bus. But this is a pretty good sized table for playing games or we have three kids, so eating. We have just regular tray tables, so you don't have to set this up if you just want to eat one meal. But like this is if you're committing to a night of hanging out. So it's about six feet this way and then about seven or eight wide. But yeah, it's a pretty cozy setup. You can throw all the, all the children in the front of the bus. If you're looking to do your own school bus conversion, uh, I would just say do it. <laughs> you don't need to know much before you get started. Um, there's plenty on YouTube to learn and um, it's a lot of fun just to kind of build something from the ground up and to kind of know everything that went into a space. Um, it's very rewarding. It's also very challenging and you'll lose sleep over it. Um, I think a, a schoolie conversion really like takes over your mind space for however long you're doing it. It is fun to do a full project start to finish and just have a space that's usable that you created. 103. <laughs> 104. You gotta stay fit living in a schoolie, man. This is my workout gym. <laughs> it's called a wood grip. Um, it's, a, it's a rock climbing pull-up bar. These curtains are DIY, obviously. Everything, it's a, everything's DIY. Um, it's just a copper pipe. We did copper pipes just because it was easy and cheap <laughs> and um, we could run it the whole length by connecting them. Um, it's a little smaller than like the black uh, pipe and a little cheaper and it looks good. It kind of matches the, the whole vibe. For the skylight, we rebuilt our skylights. This is right where the emergency hatch was, but ours was all banged up and broken plastic. So I uh, ended up just building my own. It's just a little box with some plexiglass on top and then um, a little clasp and some hinges and it just opens up. The ceiling is um, tongue and groove cedar. I think it's four inches. This is a ton of wood. I went to three different Home Depots and I said, give me all of the cedar ceiling tongue and groove that you have. Um, and so it is quite expensive to do, but it really adds kind of the, the homey, cozy, log cabin-y vibe. This is our little Wally Grow. We have these throughout the bus. They're getting a little chilly right now. It's a little sad, but it's kind of a cool deal where you just water in the back and then it kind of keeps it watering for like a week so you don't really have to mess with it. And we have a fridge that's actually a freezer on one side and then a fridge on the other. But it's pretty good size, enough for probably a week's worth of food if we're lucky. <laughs> this works great for us and it gave us a little extra countertop space. All the countertops in here, most of the construction in here is just plywood. So we just glued two pieces together and then just lacquered the top. It's not anything uh, fancy. All right, so this is our kitchen. Um, we kind of planned the whole bus around this like cube here. So we've got the bathroom on this side, put all of our plumbing here in this one area. Um, and so we got an induction uh, cooktop, two burner, 
Uh, it's all electric. We went with induction um, just because I didn't want to mess with propane tanks. I was getting near the end of the build and I was tired of figuring stuff out. So I was like, we're just gonna plug this in and drop it in. But we can always cook outside with our Coleman stove if we really need um, to be off the grid. This is like a microwave slash oven. And then we went with a big old sink, which is probably overkill. I should get like a little um, cutting board or something to put over the top to have more counter space. But yeah, again, this is just a piece of plywood. All of this is plywood. Just screwed it all together. Um, and then just put some Ikea stuff, our magnet for our knives. We take those down while we're driving, just, you know, <laughs> just in case. Um, and then just one shelf up here. And if I was gonna do it again, I'd probably put another shelf over there for like more food storage. We didn't do a ton of insulation um, just because you're fighting with uh, 60 windows to try to keep it warm or cool. But we did do rigid insulation in the ceiling, just the pink stuff. We just cut it and snapped it and shoved it up there. And then we did the rigid stuff in the walls too. Um, but there's no insulation in the floor and you can definitely feel it. <laughs> um, but if you just put slippers on, it's it's like insulating your toes. It works fine. It is hard to heat and cool in the in the winter and the summer, but um, that's just part of part of living in a school bus. Driving the bus for the first time uh, is terrifying. Um, I mean, it's huge and it's loud and I've driven some big vehicles here and there, but not consistently. Um, you've got good visibility. And so if you just go slow and if you get stuck in an intersection, don't be afraid to just like wave people past you and back up and try again for our situation where it's mostly parked. And then we just do longer chunks at like our in-laws. Um, 40 feet is great. You have a lot of extra space and it feels really roomy in here. We wanted to have a bathroom and a kitchen and a bedroom and kind of have the separate spaces. In the bathroom we have shower, toilet, and then a little tiny sink all within this little square. Um, we have a nature's head toilet and it's just a regular composting toilet. You put um, peat moss in the back and it's got a separator so pee goes in the front, poo goes in the back, and it just turns into compost. You can grow flowers with someday. We went with a composting system just so we didn't have to deal with uh, a black water tank. And then the shower we have, it's all cedar. People said not to do it on the internet, but I don't know, <laughs> we did it anyway. And it's held up fine. Um, and we have a little bathtub. So this is 24 by 36. So we have three kids now and we can do one kid at a time <laughs> in the bathtub. Um, so we can get them clean. Uh, and then this little sink just for brushing your teeth and a little mirror just to check to see how you're doing in the morning. So like at night for bedtime, there can be five people in here <laughs> at the same time all doing their business. So um, it's, it works out great for us. This here is the bedroom and we left this whole design pretty open on purpose just so we have some room to kind of shuffle around. Um, these are the wheel wells. Um, we didn't fully cover them with the bed. We thought maybe it would come that far, but it didn't. So we just made it a little sitting area to put your socks on in the morning. Um, this is a king size bed in the back. That's the engine compartment there. Um, and so we just put another cushion on the back. Then the air conditioner is right there right above our faces when we're sleeping. Down here, we've got two of these. This is mine and this is my wife's when we travel. And then we've got a wood burning stove and then we've also got a space heater just in case. This is the cubic mini stove. It gets pretty chilly in here. So we decided to do the wood burning stove um, because it, it cuts some of the moisture out of the air too. And so we can kind of um, fight the mold living in the Pacific Northwest, it's always wet. And the Cubic Mini is cute, stylish, and it fits right in. It's tiny, so you chop up your wood really small, and then you uh, just kind of have to constantly be stoking your fire. This clearance is not good. Don't install it like this. You're supposed to have 30 inches off the top 
Um, so I should probably take this down. If we had to move into this full time with my three kids and my wife, I think we'd do all right. Um, we've talked about it, like if we get land kind of out a little bit and then we live in this while we build something else, um, I think we can do it. I think the, the difficulty would be the kitchen and cooking and then having a space for the kids to run around. Um, in the Northwest, it rains a lot and so we would be kind of trapped in here. Um, but if we were traveling and we went with the weather, that would be sweet down, being down at a beach somewhere right now in the sun where the kids could play outside. Um, I think that would be great. So this is the driver's seat, just like when you went to school. Um, we didn't really make many modifications to it. Most of the knobs and whistles still work. Um, the warning lights work, the running lights. Yeah, an original seat. This thing is actually like an air, it's connected to the air system. So when you hit bumps, you kind of like feel like you're on a cloud. When you've just got the flat nose, you're like right on the edge, so you can really see everything. and it's. It actually feels like you're in control of, <laughs> of the bus. It's not as scary as you would think. I installed just like a, a, real, <laughs> a real keyhole lock. It works fine. Um, these doors don't shut all the way because they overlap. And so there's always a little bit of an air gap. For our fresh water, we just have a hose hooked up to our house over there. It's all insulated for the winter so it doesn't freeze and explode. No holding tank. We're, uh, we're not really set up to be off the grid. We've got these two huge uh, storage bays. So under here we have our um, our 50 amp plug coming in. We had an inverter. We had like four inverters actually, but we kept blowing them up. So I just, <laughs> I skipped the inverter situation and um, we just do shore power now. This is a seven gallon hot water heater. It's electric. Um, we didn't need propane or anything cause we're not off the grid. Uh, and then we've got firewood stays under here. And then we've got our hundred rolls of toilet paper <laughs> because of the pandemic. So there's tons of room under there. And um, when we go and we take it on trips, we just huck stuff in. I just decided to screw the screens on the outside and I made them two windows wide. And I think we have six windows now that have screens on them. So we can get a nice cross breeze going during the summer and not get bugs in here. If we were gonna do a bus just for like traveling and adventuring, I think we would have gone shorter because 40 feet is too long for a lot of the national parks. It's great to have all the family stuck in one small space. Um, we get to really uh, bond and hang out and um, just make memories. This is our, our memory making machine. I'm Isaac Colavecchio and um, my YouTube channel is called Cola Ventures. Um, you can see kind of the whole build and other random videos that I make. Um, same thing on Instagram, Cola Ventures. Um, and you can also stay in the bus. And so we'll put a link to our Airbnb page and you can book a night with us. And if you want, I'll, uh, I'll come talk to you about school buses <laughs> um, out here. So um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> all the info for all my stuff will be down in the description also.